Okay, I have here a classic chemistry problem. This problem comes up in almost every lab you're ever going to do, plus it's always on tests, and it's, the, it's a building block to solve a lot of more complicated problems. So this is a process you need to know, like the back of your hand. And it's not very difficult, although I see people screw it up all the time, and I just don't understand why. Maybe it's not having the right process. So I'm going to suggest a process. The, the subject, subject matter is calculating percent yield from a reaction. So here's the problem statement as we're given it. And this could be the same thing that you would determine yourself from doing some kind of an experiment in the laboratory. The reaction of 4.67 grams of C4H10, right, what is C4? Uh, methane, I guess, right? Or and I forgot my, forgot my organic chemistry already. With 23.12 grams, that's not methane, that's CH3. Uh, well, I stand, anyway, C4H10, 23.12 grams of oxygen, O2, produces 2.67 grams of carbon dioxide. What is the percent yield? Right, so we're given grams of material that we started with, so we measured out grams of product, of, of reagents, and we put them in some vessel, and then ended up with a product that we were able to separate, and then we measured on a scale the product, and we got this. So the question is, what's the percent yield? How good, was, how good were we with our experiment, with our experimental procedure? So there's a standard process. Now, I generally like to solve problems where I just go through it in real time, because it gives it more of a, a feeling of how do you actually go about it, you know? But there's so many numbers here, I don't want to get bogged down in the numbers. So I partially solved it. Let me go through the methodology first, and then we'll implement the methodology. First thing is to balance the equation. Second thing then is to find the limiting reagent, right? So one of these things, right, we didn't measure them out necessarily so that they would both be consumed equally in the reaction. One's going to be consumed more than the other one, and it goes by the ratio of the stoichiometric coefficients, the things that we have to fill in here to balance the equation. Now let's talk about significant figures. Because we can't invent precision, right? We can only, if we only measure something to a certain amount of precision, a certain number of digits, then when we have a final answer, we can't predict a final answer with more precision than what we started with. So we have here, we have three significant figures of this, we have four of this, and we have three of this, right? So our limiting factor there is three. Now you might say, well now wait, we have these numbers two, 13, eight, isn't that, doesn't that diminish our significance to one? No, because these are absolute, right? This two, instead, the two is actually 2.0000000000000000. It's infinite in terms of accuracy, right? That's an absolute ratio. So those don't affect your significant figure. So we started with three, we better end up with three. Okay, I hope this helps. If you have any problems or questions with chemistry or calculus, send them to solve at midnighttutor.com.